Hello, I'm Steve Gerald hosting the inaugural webcast of the National League of Cities Internet TV channel, NLC TV. It's a valuable resource that will feature programming from many different sources, programs highlighting NLC conferences and meetings, but also video clips on successful programs, lessons learned, and best practices. We are also launching today our first monthly newscast for and about cities, built on the foundation of the prior National City Network TV prototype test platform. We talked with NLC's executive director, Don Borat, about how NLC will use the capabilities of streaming media to share not only written information, but images as well. There's a lot of information about creative programs that are happening in cities, things that are important for local governments, for citizens in local government. What we are going to be doing is providing a monthly newscast that is about and for cities. It'll provide information that is relevant, uh, quick examples. It's going to be a fast-moving uh, piece that is reflective of the way we get news today, but it's focused on the constructive, positive things that local governments are doing and ways that cities and local officials can improve their own communities. And now on to some news about cities. A recent FBI report shows that violent crime is increasing, particularly in small and mid-sized cities. NLC has reacted to this news with a call for renewed federal-local partnership approach to lowering escalating crime rates. Audwin Samuel, chair of NLC's Public Safety Policy Committee and councilman from Beaumont, Texas, tells NLC-TV, the problem needs to be addressed with enforcement, prevention, and intervention. Well, we've seen across the nation an increase in violent crimes. Uh, so this is a concern of all cities across the nation, from the smaller townships up to the major metropolitan areas. Now we've made progress in the war on drugs, but now we're beginning to see an increase in violent crimes, such as robberies, murders, aggravated assaults with deadly weapons. So these are issues, you have a shift in the type of issues we're dealing with as far as public safety. Gangs are a significant cause of violence in many areas. NLC's Institute for Youth, Education and Families is heading up a consortium of 13 California cities that are fighting growing gang violence in their communities. Leaders from those cities met last month in San Jose as part of the Gang Prevention Network, sponsored by NLC and the National Council on Crime and Delinquency. The three-year effort is expected to yield successful anti-gang programs that can be duplicated in cities across the country. NLC leaders are also working for more funding for the Community-Oriented Policing Services Program, also known as the COPS Program. Terry Riley, president of NBC Leo and a Kansas City Councilman, comments. In fact, there's been a huge hike in violent crimes in uh, major urban cities across America. And if we had this community policing uh, dollars earmarked towards that, we believe there could be a significant decrease in it. Can exposure to violence in the media increase aggressive behaviors in children? The Federal Communications Commission thinks so, and the NLC agrees, basing their findings on more than 300 scientific studies. NLC President and Indianapolis Mayor Bart Peterson raised his concerns over violent media's impact on children. Peterson hosted an NLC Media Violence Summit in his home city in April. The interactive discussion, which featured leading experts, spurred national dialogue on the ways leaders and, and other stakeholders can help parents protect their children from violence in the media. Now let's turn to the home front, literally. NLC is concerned about increasing rates of foreclosure that threaten home ownership, an important component of economic security for families and a source of stability for communities. In May of this year, RealtyTrack, the leading online marketplace for foreclosed properties, reported a 90% increase over the previous year in the numbers of foreclosure filings, default notices, and repossessions. Recently, NLC webcast a symposium sponsored by Wells Fargo. Mortgage experts discussed responsible lending and means to combat substandard and predatory loan practices. The goal is to help families achieve and sustain asset growth through home ownership. 
With support from the Ford and Annie E. Casey Foundation, NLC's Institute for Youth, Education and Families is implementing a project designed to assist municipal leaders in their efforts to help families increase their economic stability. The Helping Families Build Assets project focuses on financial education, home ownership counseling and incentives, asset accumulation and asset protection. Moving from the topic of home foreclosure to home reconstruction, NLC's 2007 Congress of Cities will convene in New Orleans November 13th through 17th. Participants will have a unique ground zero view of rebuilding by a community destroyed by Hurricane Katrina two years ago. The 2007 Congress of Cities will have all the usual hallmarks of NLC conferences, leadership training seminars, workshops, and the chance for local officials from around the country to connect and share information. But it will also have New Orleans, a city known for its fine restaurants, beautiful history, and hospitality. It's a city on the rebound. Go to register for this exciting conference at www.nlc.org. In our Congress Watch segment, NLC is active in the appropriations process with a request for modest increases in funding for critical programs for cities, including transportation, housing, and community development block grants. As city officials say, cities must deliver services 24-7. Congressional inaction, at least in one area, is causing them problems. A recent NLC municipal officials opinion poll found that 65 percent of cities said that the national growth in immigration has made an impact on their communities. Dennis Zein, chairman of the NLC's Immigration Task Force and Los Angeles Councilman also commented on the issue. We need to address it with a comprehensive approach to say we need to have the borders protected, we need to have employers verify and we need to have a system to legitimize those people who are here in this country. Zion also commented on the NLC's role as the voice in Washington for municipalities across the nation. NLC means large cities and small cities and everything in between. It means bipartisan approach. And I love the term that potholes are not Republican, they're not Democrat. Potholes are issues that affect communities. We need to deal with Congress. We need to deal with other cities. We need to deal with a cooperative fashion. The unique part about NLC is that it pushes partisanism aside and puts in realism. Our last news item concerns telecommunications. A new Federal Communications Commission order will severely limit the ability of local governments to negotiate video franchises for their communities. NLC has joined a number of other local government organizations and associations in fighting this order since it could hurt consumers, strip away community channels, and threaten public safety networks. NLC and other organizations have asked the federal courts to reverse the order, which they say violates existing laws. To learn the extent of the damage to municipalities, listen to Ken Fellman, Arvada, Colorado mayor and former chairman of NLC's Technology and Communications Policy Committee. Telecommunications, just in the taxes that it generates, is billions of dollars a year. And if you think of the value, the real estate, property value of our rights of way, again, trillions. There have been studies show trillions of dollars is the value of local government rights of way throughout the country. So when we talk about preserving local control and the ability to manage that part of our public property infrastructure, the loss of that ability, if it were to come to that, would be astronomical to us. And so once again, welcome. We'll hope to see you back here another time. For now, I'm Steve Gerald for NLC TV.